With a win tonight, the Eastern Florida men's soccer team will claim the Region 8 championship. But the reigning champs from Daytona State are dangerous and already in survive in advance mode. A win tonight by the Falcons pushes the conference series to a game three up in Daytona Beach. Live from Orlando Hill Stadium on the Melbourne campus of Eastern Florida State College, it's the Titans and the Daytona State Falcons next. It is a soccer Saturday night on the Space Coast. Two top 10 teams under the lights here at Orlando Health Stadium. Number nine, Daytona State College versus number five, Eastern Florida State College. The Region 8 Championship on the line. Good evening and welcome to Melbourne, everybody. Alongside Tom Traxler, my good friend, I'm Jeff Radcliffe. Thank you so very much for joining us for Titan Soccer here on WEFS. And uh, the Titans, Tom, win 3-2 back in September up in Daytona Beach. That means they're in position to win tonight and then capture the title. It's over and done with. Daytona needs to win or tie to force a game three tiebreaker on Wednesday. Look, Jeff, these two teams don't like each other anyway. They're always competing for this title. So for this to be on the line, for this to be the stakes, hide your wives, hide your kids. <laughs> this one right. is going to be a crazy affair. Two teams combined for 48,008 yellow cards in the previous meeting. What's what you come to expect when these two rivals face? For Daytona State, Carlos Zambrano, the player to watch, a Missouri State commit with nine assists this year. That's fourth in the nation. He is a smooth criminal. Why don't you think Tallur from the Oceans movies? This guy, he can find the pass that will unlock you. He can score the goal. He's very, he's very clever on the ball, just a smooth operator. For the Titans, the Italian, Danielle Veterasi. We saw him blow up in that game against Monroe. He's got nine goals, eight assists. He is a transfer from Indian Hill Community College where he was an All-American, not a good guy, not a bad guy to have. Look, I call him the assassin. I want you to think of Jason Bourne. This guy can hurt you in so many ways because he's got a nose for goal, because he can run, because he can battle. He's got it all. This guy can hurt you. Daniela picked up a bit of a knock in training earlier in the week. He will not start tonight, but will play according to Adam Butler. Uh, Shizi Masiko will start in his place up top of that 4-3-3 formation. You see that on the left, the players in that starting lineup. And for Daytona, they'll play three at the back, a 3-5-2 with Saunders, Saunders, and Chris Gonar are, are the guys that are going to be really tested by this, this speedy front line for Eastern Florida. There's no doubt about it. They're going to have to be very good at the back to handle the front line from Eastern Florida. And I think it's going to come down to the two midfields. I think whichever team wins the midfield is going to control this game. Two teams shake hands. I, this will be the extent of the pleasantries, I think, until the, any post-game handshake afterwards. I, I don't even know how pleasant this is. This, is. this is probably like one of the most unpleasant handshakes you've ever seen. <laughs> These two coaches know each other well. And on the left there was Joe Avalon now in his first season as the head coach, but a guy with uh, plenty of pedigree. And then you've got Adam Butler now in his uh, second season, the native of London, but Manchester United fan. 
as uh, we talked ahead of time. It, uh, in his generation, it doesn't matter where you live. You you probably, at his age, you probably were a Manchester United fan because they were winning everything there was to win. So it didn't matter where you lived in England at that point. But he did say his family was from the Lake District, so that kind of makes sense. Right. His uh, Titans 11-1. and one, And then Joe's team 9-2-2. Two, and two. He took over for Bart Sasnet, who built the program, who's moved on back to Georgia. But he's a guy that everybody in Central Florida knows because of his ties to – the, the, the club scene and the moving kids on to college, uh, he's the perfect fit for their program. Look, Joe has been around soccer in Central Florida since forever. You can't imagine Central Florida soccer without talking about Joe Avalone. Um, so, yeah, he, he's he's pivotal. He's starting to shape this Eastern Florida team. And, and just, just like on the other side, Adam has really now shaped this Eastern Florida team to be his. Well, Chris Bolak. Anthony Salgado and Edson Carvajal are our referees for this match, and they will have a busy night. Oh, I'll tell you what, the man in the middle right there, he's going to have to be a strong character. These two teams are going to go at it. The tackles are going to be fierce. He's going to have to be spot on. He's going to have to be brave, because if he's not, he could have a real powder keg on his hands. Titans in white, Daytona in blue will attack left to right. It is game on here in Melbourne. And immediately we'll go into touch, trying to play direct. It'll be a deep throw for Eastern Florida. A lot of chatter on the field. There'll be a lot of chatter in the crowd tonight. Yeah, I like going forward off kickoff. Jeff, I put the other team under pressure first. I mean, some teams go backwards and they don't even get across midfield. So you see you see the high pressure coming in from, from Daytona State right away. Down the line. Underway, set sun setting behind us. Daytona State riding a four or five game unbeaten run. Eastern Florida really hasn't lost since a game against LSU Eunice on the 8th of September. And then been rattling off wins against ranked teams ever since. Both teams have lost to LSU Eunice. Ranked three or third in the country right now. Daytona will work inside. Utah took took a Hisa as the right wing back in that 3-5-2. We'll give it up to Didier Jean Baptiste. Crossing halfway. So, so far, Tom, Daytona keeping the possession and trying to put the Titans under some pressure here. Yeah, absolutely. They've definitely wanted to go on the front foot. Possession is always something that you're going to see a lot of out of any Joe Avalon coach team. Uh, he, you know, he, he, he talks about it. He, he, he's he's going to put that first and foremost. And you usually see that team with a, with a high amount of possession, uh, any Joe Avalon coach team. Kodai Suzuki making his 10th start tonight in the net for the Titans. Five shutouts so far this season, just six goals allowed. Hold up play there from the forward, Hector Moreno. Leads the team with 33 shots, and now the Titans come away with it and will attack for the first time. Right, tackled away. Zambrano, we talked about in the open, helping win that. You can see number 14, uh, Tokuhisa, and then Angel Flores on the far side really get high up the field. You really get a sense of, of the urgency of the moment for Daytona State. And they're probably in more of an urgency moment than Eastern Florida at this time. Because it's, it is, you know, a tie extends their season, a win certainly does, but a loss ends their season. So whereas a loss doesn't end Eastern Florida season, they'll go on to play later this week. So you, you really sense this urgency early on in Daytona State. 
doesn't necessarily put the nail in the coffin for, for either team because each team ranked in the nation's top ten. There are some at-large bursts there is. for the Nationals. But there'll be no more, there's no more regular season games, and, and then you have to wait and see, right? Right. Eastern Florida in good shape, having beaten the number one team earlier this season. But yeah, you want to take care of it. Last year on this field, in the same situation, the Titans needed to win to force a third game, weren't able to do so, and did not play that final game. So trying to turn the tables, as it were. Titans down that right channel. Kale Saunders running step for step. There's going to be any surprises really from anybody individually or tactically. No, these teams are really familiar with each other. Uh, you know, from the game they played earlier, they probably watch each other a lot. I, I <laughs> so yeah, no, there's not going to be too many surprises. Saunders and Saunders, two of the three center backs. There's Zambrano. Big challenge there. Keeping it is Jacob Restrepo out of Lake Brantley High School over in Altamont Springs. Number of Florida based players on this Falcons roster. You see, immediately, it's going to be an interesting battle between Christoph Steinleitner and Carlos Zambrano. And, and Steinleitner knows right where he is. You see him glancing over his shoulder looking for him, and you better know where he is. Aaron Ball allows Titans to come forward with Ryan Thomas. Continues to play to Maseko. Tackled out for a throw. Good positive play here for Eastern Florida. Good cover, well read by Brent Saunders coming across on a tackle. In the six minute, no score. Down to the corner flag comes up the line. Daytona will have it. Lifting it long. Lovelock and Wyatt will be back. Sometimes that's what you need there. Just that outlet ball, you chase, you turn the defense, make them run the wrong way, you're going to get a deep throw in. Ooh, foul throw. Uh, Flora has called for it. Thank you, Mary Products. Don't see it called. You see it called at the youth level all the time. Not so much here, but it does happen. Dance out of trouble. Flores on the ball quickly into the attack. Falcons at the corner of the area. And ball back recontrolled by Eastern Florida. Working up the side. Saunders has it for Daytona. Trying to work the edges. Right there, you look at Daytona State shape, and when they lost the ball, it was it was Utah coming back to, to kind of flatten them out. It almost makes a five at the back, not just three. Yeah, it's certainly a challenge in playing the three-five-two, Tom. Right with with. Your, your wing backs, as you get later in the game, you have to have that commitment to yeah. running all the way up and then all the way back. Yeah, their engine rooms have to be really good because there's there's a lot required of them in, in both ends, in the attack and the defense. Turn here from Maseko. One touched for by Amancio. And back to the keeper, Eric Speed out of Fort Walton Beach. Freshman walk-on, played at Choctaw High School. Had a shutout against Millennia Atlantic the other night. 3-0 win for Daytona. It's always good to give a young player confidence, give him a clean sheet. No disrespect to Millennia Atlantic. It's not Eastern Florida. We'll see how that no. works tonight. No, but a clean sheet's a clean sheet. Right. You know, as a defense, you always want to keep clean sheets, and you're proud of that. 
Titans have had their fair share of those quote unquote more of a cupcake games. They beat Fort Lauderdale 5-1, had a game against Johnson U where they won 6 nothing, 17-1 against Fort Lauderdale earlier this season. I think that really speaks to the quality of both these teams really. It, you know, it, it, until they get in the national level, they, there's yeah. not much competition for either. Six of the 12 games the Titans have played this season are against ranked competition. And that's what they have to look to find to, right. to make sure they're sharp getting into that, you know, the critical end of the season. They're tested. Certainly these games test them. In the two-team conference, two-team region. Back it goes. Speed with speed coming in on him. And Dennis. Ooh. And now a loose ball. Well done. Speed recognized the danger and was out there quickly. He, he used some speed to get out. He, he recognized it early as a bit of a bad pass, and it was off, and he had to get off his line to go snuff it out. I'm he sure he has never heard that pun before, ever. <laughs> ever. Not once. Not once. And, and I'm going to use it several times. <laughs> Too good not to. I was, I was a little quick to use it. <laughs> Save it in the pocket for later. On the move again, big challenge there by Saunders to win the ball. Titans haven't asked quite the right questions as of yet. Here's a positive buildup. And nothing's going to come easy tonight. There'll be no given goals, they'll be earned. But I'll tell you, with the quality of these two teams, if there is a mistake, expect it to be punished. Moreno having to drop a little further deep. Now crossing halfway with a full head of steam. Uh, nice job by Thomas to draw the foul, using the body to block it. Yeah, good job of winning the ball and then, and then shielding it off and putting himself in between. So it, it, that 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 kind of it kind of uh, it, it it forced Jean Baptiste Jean Baptiste to, to foul him or to let him get away. But the foul is not bad. It's not a bad place to foul. Big surprise, actually. He's one of, one of the more surprising players for Daytona State. You know Zambrano. You know what you're going to get out of him. But in talking with uh, with Joe Avalon, he says this kid's come in and he's been fantastic. Freshman out of Hillside, New Jersey, but went to high school in Boynton Beach. Eight goals, most of those coming off the bench, and now he's earned now his fourth starting out of the season. Proves to be dangerous, scored in each of the last six games, in fact. You can't leave him off the field. Not when you're scoring goals. He's trying to get Seiko up top. Good defense there by Christ Gonar. So far, clean game. Yeah, look, we, we talked to both coaches, right? And then one of the things they talked about was controlling your emotions. I think both of them were had that as keys. Well, it, it, it doesn't take much to get this. It, it takes the slightest of sparks to get this one to ignite. And it's it's there. These, te these two teams don't like each other. But at the same time, there's going to be more of the season. So you, you don't want to get yourself into any kind of real trouble that might see you miss multiple games because of disciplinary reasons. A hook there from Nelson, letting the defender know he was there. And that's the trick. It's always not that easy because emotions are emotions. And these are young men. And sometimes, sometimes they don't know how to handle their emotions. Edson Carvajal, the center referee, will help the trainers on. Allow the trainers to come on to take a look at Tarasian. So this is where you're going to want to pay attention to to two Branton Saunders, and then you're going to want to pay attention uh, to to his brother, number 27, yeah, Kale. Kale. Kale had a goal, a uh, corner kick, easily on a corner kick, easily. in the last match. And you also might want to, if you're Eastern Florida, you might want to be paying close attention to to Baptiste as well. I mean, these are these are big lads, so this ball's going to get served in. They expect them to get in the other end of it. Of course, on this end, it's going to be Zambrano. <laughs> High 
high school state champ in 2021 with Doral Academy. Whistles that one in, but right in the gut of Suzuki. Needed a deflection of some sort. Zambrano. Dennis. It's a good play. Work it all the way to the other side where Flores awaits. And now we'll serve in a cross, but it's behind. But it did take a deflection, so it will be a corner kick here for Daytona State. You know, again, it's, it's going to be about the same. Anytime you're going to see a ball served in, pay attention to those names, the, the two Saunders brothers, Baptiste. They're big lads, and, and you know, like I've always said, you, you serve a good ball and you make a good run and good things happen. So if you're Eastern Florida, it's a focus, be first to the ball here. If you're the goalkeeper, read it well, be good off your line, try and get up there, try and punch it away, catch it if you can. But for whatever you do, don't let a blue shirt be first to it. Zambrano puts the right foot into it and overshoots everybody. And that delivery was not good. <laughs> Too much of it. That was a mailman who was put in the wrong box. <laughs> Someone's going, that person doesn't live here. Return to sender. Return it. Thomas. Perez. Trying to get somebody running free. Yes! Throw in for Eastern Florida here. Nice free kick. Oh. Yeah, foul, foul on Restrepo. Referee's calling it tight. And I think you should, but that's tough too because if you're going to call it tight, you have to do that for 90 minutes. Everything has to be consistent. Otherwise, players get frustrated. Oh, if if these, any one of these two get frustrated, hmm. Bear de Rossi is in the match now. A one man breakaway. Meanwhile, it's Daytona going the other way with it, with their pace. And clean data there. No fuss, no muss. I think Coach Adam Butler has said, okay, look, you know, the, the, so far Daytona State's probably edged it out. Let's let's get our danger guy there. How you feel? You're good? Let's go. Let's get him out there. And nursing a bit of an ankle knock. Good play there by Lovelock. The two English center backs, he and Wyatt, have been quite a pairing all season. He's all right. Put some tape on it, put some spit on it. On you go. Let's go. He's a tough kid. Thomas settling over. Vera Rossi will collect. The Italian will make the move on his left. Good challenge. Will roll in behind. Corner kick. Good tackle by, good, good tackle by, by Christ. Gungar, yeah. By Gungar, good tackle, showing his speed. But immediately, first thing he does when he touches the ball is he earns a corner for Rossi. So he's making his impact well known early on. Something positive, one of the first things he does is, is, a, is a positive impact, it's what you want. Roberto Rossi puts his right boot into it. Not a bad kick, headed down once. Takes a deflection on its way out. That was good delivery. George Wyatt found it. He knows he should have a little bit better. He's like, oh, because he, he did get it. He did head it down. Probably didn't get everything on it that he wanted. Tipped back to the mixer, but right to Roberto Rossi. Oh, what a cut. Makes one move. Now a second on his right foot in the area. Little hand on the jersey. Able to get out of there with it was Tokuhisa. Nice work to recover. Did a good job defensively being strong. Look out. So Jack Nelson in a full head of steam. It's going to be a foul. Nah, it's going to be a foul. Nelson was running like a bat out of you know where to get back into the play and committed the foul. It's going to be a foul. Look, you're right to get upset. Hey, set your piece. Just get on with it. Strepo okay. FAU commit Restrepo, number 15. Verderasi, we're told, getting a number of high Division I looks. Restrepo, good, strong player. He's, he's a player you'd always want in your midfield because he's going to do the dirty work. He's going to win the 50-50s. And he's tidy with the ball when he wins it. Left 
boot is in. Chipped. Giving chase is Saunders. Nelson able to get a foot to it, push it back. Boy, dangerous ball there. Moreno in the vicinity. And it will be a throw in. Yeah, that was a, that was a great flick on well read. He's uh, from Kangawa, Japan. His 13th start tonight. As regular as it comes in that team sheet. Back to Ngongar. Stripper one for that one. A lot of action here on the right side of the field. We'll initiate the switch. Brent Saunders out to his brother Kale. He's from New Smyrna Beach, but went to different high schools. Laying that one back perfectly, but nobody home at the other end. Worked by Thomas to get there. Keep the chance from happening. Yeah, because he went on the other side, you, 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 look oh, over, you look over this side and, he, and, and you can't make that run. That's why he wasn't there, because he has to kind of hold back a little bit and play it a bit honest. You, if you push both sides, sometimes you're going to open yourself up to that counter. Yeah, the cutback was great, but there's no way you two was going to make up that distance to get there. Gungar. Down, Thomas immediately yeah, getting fronted and foul. Really good at shielding that ball and inviting the pressure. Ooh. Careful. Careful. What did you say on the drive over? Simba down now. Simba down now. <laughs> That's in Carvajal. Has Ref it under control. Yeah, that's a good job by the referee there because you, you could give a yellow for kicking the ball away. But he's going to talk to the player in that situation. He's going to blow us and say, hey, we're not going to do that. As long as he gives the same quarter the other way. So, so far, so good for this referee. He's got to keep it in by Verde Rossi. Thomas measures and sends it forward. The chase is on. And seeing it out, in fact, is Brand Saunders in behind for a goal kick. Pressure coming from Tiago Perez. A lot of jersey tugging. Mm. Run, run a little late on the other side to, to get there on the far side. Dennis Restrepo sends it left to Flores. Possession edge heavily in favor of Daytona State. A lot of it's been in the center, in the back. Coming back for it is Moreno, the Colombian. And now Zambrano. And lean up. He's coming in really deep, and, and what he wants is he wants to stay pretty connected to Baptiste. Dennis to, to Isa. Usually it's one pass, a couple of contacts, and it goes to the other team. Nobody's really linking up many passes, getting behind. Yeah, that's going to be yellow. Our first yellow of the match goes to Jacob Restrepo. Thiago Perez turning, trying to get the crowd into it. I don't, I don't think you need much help doing that. His crowd's into it. Gonna get a 
get a look at this at the yellow card and you see he just, he just yeah he comes a little bit from behind but gets a little bit high it, it's a pretty easy decision for the official like i said but that's part of restrepo's game i mean he's a strong tackling midfielder but now he's he's, he's gonna have to be very very careful It, it, it kind of, it's not going to nullify him, but it is going to make him think about that side of his game, the things that, you know, the, some of those, some of those 50-50 tackles he's going to have to think about. Perez, give this a go with the right foot. Boy, a worm burner. Yeah, I don't think it was very well hit. Titans trying to come away with it. Boy, physical toll this is going to take. Zambrano willing that one. Uh, he's, you know, not only is he, can he score the goals, but he's, he's willing to do the dirty work as well. Get stuck in there. Titans will have it on the throw. Coming up on 21 minutes to play here in this first half. There are, is no overtime. If it ends in a draw, we play the game three Wednesday night. Yeah, you, you tend to think that the draw kind of would favor Daytona State, right? It keeps everybody in, but you know, with Eastern Florida having a chance to, to settle it tonight with a win, a yeah, draw, it's interesting a draw how that, would that feel like a win if I, you're Daytona State. Because you either way, you want to get another game, right? So yeah. if you're Daytona, well, if you're Daytona State, yes. If you're Eastern Florida, no, you, of course not. No, you don't want to go play next week. Not if you so can as, help it. As Adam Butler said, we have to win. Yes. Like it's, and then you wonder in a, in, a, in a momentum situation, how that swings the pendulum. Yeah, I guess a draw is still better ranking wise. Doesn't drop you as far. Well, a win would be even better if, right. you're, if you're Eastern Florida. I mean, headed out of there by Saunders with his height. Yeah, he's gonna gobble those up. That's, for Brandon, that's, that's his bread and butter. Flores, good control. the line. Kale. And into touch it goes. Titans will have it. and under 20. A couple of subs changing hands here. On for Daytona is Christian Rodriguez, freshman out of Port Orange, went to Seabreeze High School, making his 14th appearance. Both of these teams have pretty deep benches. Yeah, I mean, you look at, they're kind of different recruiting wise. Um, but yeah, both full of talent. I mean, probably Eastern Florida pretty heavy on on, on a foreign based player, whereas Daytona a little more heavy on, on a Florida based player, but both finding uh, really good players to, to keep these programs uh, traditionally strong as they both are. Go, go, go right, go right. Moreno. One on two. Can't keep it. Not happy about that. So far, each team kind of somewhat negating each other's strengths, really. And certainly their talisman have been held in check for each team so far. there. Thomas tries to curl away and it got away. <laughs> Whoops. So Christian Rodriguez in for Daytona State. Coach Joe Avalone choosing to say, you know, hey, Restrepo, come on over. Let's sit for a minute. Let, you know, you're on a yellow. That type is, is that type of game. So, 
you know, we don't want to risk it. Now he will come back in, but each each coach so far using their substitutions wisely. Yeah, a couple more now coming on here for Daytona State. Zambrano is off for a blow, and Lissandro Molina, heck, heck of an attacking player to bring on. Had a goal last year against Eastern Florida in 3-1 win for Daytona. One and done once they get into the attacking third. Yeah, neither team seeming able to to sustain attacks and, and possession in the final third. Berto Rossi, good defense, forced to give it up. That just speaks to the lack of space we get and the pressure that's being put on the ball. Bit of a slip. Return ball. Saunders will clean that up, throw in Eastern Florida with 16 to play here in the opening half. So Chris Steinleitner, a man from Munich. Yeah, he's got a big job with Restrepo in the middle so far. He's done a, he's done a good job. He's, he's been a good shield Had his back four. Had a goal against the Falcons in that 3-2 victory. Scored it just after halftime. As it stands, this is only goal of the season came against Daytona. Hey, when you can score in, like, in England, you call it a derby match. So if you can score in that, hey, you're happy. Yeah, they make tifos out of you. Yes, they do. Become a hero. He's trying to figure things out far side. Oy. Staying on the ball. Thomas running forward has Verde Rossi in the area. Cross away earns another corner. So a lot of credit there to Masico. Keeping possession, get it across. Yeah, you, you definitely have to give a lot of credit. A lot of credit to Thomas there. Great tackle finding Verde Rossi. But again, you know, Christ coming across on the tackle for Daytona State. They were there, but it did create a corner. So, you know, an opportunity here for Eastern Florida. Each one of these, a possible moment. And we'll make sure that's out of play. Flores doing a good job of, of coming to the near post area, clearing the ball away. I think that was quite delivered where he wanted it. <laughs> Who's that hairstyle look like? I, I look at that and I go, that's very familiar. Looks like Demolition Man. <laughs> oh no, that, that would have been Simon Phoenix. It looks like Simon Phoenix from Demolition Man. Giassi's in that artist. situation, he yeah, said, artist. Him, Look, but he yeah. used Simon Phoenix did it first. In that case, said, Simon says, ball away. <laughs> Rossi, bit of a meg. Three on him. We'll let it go to Thomas. Good control there by the Englishman. Gets across well, away to the ball. back Paul post. Nobody home. But how about that work? That is tantalizing. I'll tell you what, Thomas has shown some quality here these last couple of attacks. Absolute quality ball, nobody home on the cross. Look at the shape on this and, and, the, and the whip on it. What oh. a, that's just beautiful. The, the only thing it didn't have was the finish. It was served on the platter. That was a, that was a, that was a beautiful meal right there, just waiting for someone to finish. Transfer from Stamford. Daytona State continuing to run the numbers out. Damian Rogers will get a run here on the near side. Ten, ten, a little 
bit more of the possession now, too. Masico. Won by Saunders. Now the hold up for Moreno. Try to turn Lovelock. Oh, and they get in behind. And nobody else as far as assistance there. For Londano, another forward in the match here for the Falcons. in it. Verde Rossi trying to pull it down. Laying it off to Emmanuel. Rokisa Emmanuel off the bench here for Eastern Florida. Yeah, a tame effort, just couldn't get a lot on it. Turned by Dennis, who's from Paris. We were discussing, everybody was calling him Dennis, but you would think it would be Denis. I think, or Denis. Denise. Yeah, but you would think, yeah, yeah. Would, it, yeah. If, but I, you know what? That's one thing about announcers when they start trying to put accents on it. Just when you don't have it, you like, and I don't. Der I, Derek Ray is brilliant at it. I way. can't do it. I, that's why I'm. Just, that's why I'm here. Derek Ray is, you know, he does a game, a Dutch game, and have him go Virgil Van Dijk. <laughs> what he I, calls us the name. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah, but it says it in the native accent every time. Flores to the line. Oh, it's going to be a goal kick. Just hoping for more. It's been busy, Flores. A lot of energy. Changes here for Adam Butler now. Good skill as well, Flores. Daiki Okada, bit of a super sub. Bring the guy off the bench, he's got nine goals. Six assists. Six of those came in one game, by the way, against Fort Lauderdale. Can't beat that, can you? Three goals in his last four matches. Ackerman Stanfeld also in making his 11th appearance for the uh, appearance for the Titans. Got to manage the, uh, the roster because it's going to be a long night. Boy, Oof. comes away with it. Does Emmanuel a second time, but not a third, and Denise eventually wins. Rogers puts it into the area. Oh, that had to be right. It got underneath him and it rolled, but it, it stayed there, so he had enough to get up and still play the ball away, but it potentially could have been disastrous. These are these moments in the match where you gotta watch when the when the makeup of each roster kind of changes a little bit, and that's when some uncertainties happen. Here's Molina. Like that Zimbrano trying to get a shot away, Moreno. This is starting to get really transitional now. Game stretching a bit. Verde Rossi squares it. Emmanuel back to Daniela. That's that going to be a kick. yellow. It should be a yellow card. He's yep, they'll stop the clock at 8.32. You're right, Tom. Yeah, he's got to hold his shirt, give a little tug. And yeah, you'll see it You'll see it come up right there. You'll see it. He, he, he gets by Damian Rogers. Rossi and, and really has no choice. He has to do what he has to do at that point. Take it for the team. So now Rogers and Restrepo. But with that guy, you, you have to learn, you gotta go with the runner, especially if it's Red Rossi, you gotta go with him. That ball's played, don't, where the ball goes, it goes, you, you follow him. Because you don't, and that's what happens. You, either, either he's gonna get behind you, or you're gonna have to foul him. It's a dangerous little area here. could be crossed, it also could be struck. And if you're a Verde Rossi full of confidence, you may just have a go at this near post. I'll let it fly off of the wall. 
Wall does its job. Stand strong. Because he was having a go at the near post. He, he saw it. He wanted it. Every right to a player like that scores goals the way he does. You don't want to be in the wall in that situation. <laughs> That's well, he jumps. He caught more on his shoulder, but right. making it difficult. Wall did his job. Another corner here. That one whipped in. Another good one. Spilled once. Ooh. Wow. Deflected like a pinball wizard down there. When you see your keeper come out and you miss it as a coach, you go, oh! Yep. Titan smelling blood here. But good cover on the line. Trying to keep it in that attacking area. Werner Rossi. Lay it back. Defense comes out. And good shape shown by the Falcons. Sprayed wide, headed forward, and now collected and run at by Saunders. Going to get out and get those long legs are running. Branton. This is going to be a tough one to handle and stays in. No. Oh, the ball went over the line. Under seven to play, opening half. So it always seems to be a lot on the line when these two teams play this bit of a derby. I-95 affair. The I-95 derby. You've named it, Jeff. <laughs> Sandro Falcon's player. Shake it up. Take Sandro a look at that Molina. corner. Feeling that. Yeah, so here's the corner. You see this ball come come whipping in. Speed comes out. That's oh, when, off the line. That's safe. when Coach Avalon's got a little squeaky bum at that point. Keeper comes out and misses it, as you see right there. Yeah, checking the jaw. Molino going, is it still there? Okay. Oh, is it in place? Yeah, yeah, okay. I can move it. Okay, good. Sophomore from Mendoza, Argentina. It's on the run again. Titans will have the throw. Down the line it goes. Manuel comes to the ball. Whistled to the near side. Collected by Thomas. Federasi beats one and earns what we thought was a corner, but good job by Dennis getting back. Titans ball. Five minutes to play. Yeah, Titans starting to get a little bit going here late in the half. You got you got Steinlight there kind of really sitting tight. I'm, I'm noticing Pedro Amancio coming and, and sitting right beside him. That's going to let a guy like Ryan Thomas get forward, combining in with Verderasi, and, and it's it's proving to to give Eastern Florida a good lift. Nice work. Titans back on the ball. Emmanuel. Fall to Amancio. Squared. Waiting, shot, deflected, top of the 18. It's the hand of a Eastern Florida player. A little bit of discussion on the back line here for Daytona State. Yeah. Branton Saunders kind of directing Organize traffic. Yeah. Hey, he's just letting him know, hey, look, this is where we want you to be. Directing, into it. directing traffic. Headed high in the air. Down. 
Oh, Ooh, that was going to be a clever little ball. Yeah, Molina trying to find Moreno. Now Zambrano is fouled. Yeah. But you can see that the Eastern Florida know who he is, and they're not giving him much time on the ball at all. Ackerman Stanfeld commits a foul, and now a free kick coming the way of the Falcons. Going to march the 10 back. It's interesting, these you either change angle, these, these free kicks, it's kind of right in the middle. So you're going to have to change, you have to get an angle, you have to bend, this, bend the ball away a little bit or change the angle. He, he, you might see him come wide to Damian Rogers, who's on. He might be able to serve in. Straight balls sometimes cause problems. You can't get the thing is you can flick them on, but you can't get any power on them. And you see him looking, and, they're, they're, and Thomas yeah, is the keen side. to cover it. So you have to get a bend on this ball. There you go. It's going to change the angle a little bit. Tipped it up over the top. It, a tough free kick to take from the middle of the park. Out it goes. Throwing back to the Falcons who come in ranked ninth in the country. Titans fifth. Tells you what you need to know right there. Change here for Daytona State. The Tokuhisa going to come back on. Apparently, he doesn't like sleeves. <laughs> Either that or he, I don't know. Maybe he's going to get more of a suntan. There's no sun out. The run from Emmanuel. Thomas controls, takes a touch to the left. Immediately, Tokahisa put into pressure. Oh, back heel and Veteros. That's not going to help. Him. A messed up ankle. Look, he knows he's going to take a knock or two. That should be. All right, interesting. Referee chooses to let it go. Fair enough. Ackerman Stanfeld mixing it up with Christian Rodriguez. Oh, tough. One minute to play in the period. Oh, now he's got one sleeve down, one sleeve up. Nope, rolling it back up. <laughs> Doesn't want a farmer's yeah. tan. Yeah, moon's out, guns out. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's got the Japanese guns. Uh, trying to turn, Emmanuel keeps it alive. On his right foot, can get it to his left. The cross is away, right to Speed, who picks it up. And there's 20 seconds to play here in the half with no score. Yeah, good strong run. Your speed, he collects it. So, you know, the more he gets to touch, calms himself. Because he is young. These are big games for him. Zambrano will boot it for the sake of it. And we are at the half. Nil, nil. Daytona State, Eastern Florida State. All for Region 8 tonight in Melbourne. You know, you can treat it as a club and it can still be beneficial to you, but you'll get so much more if you just treat it as a home and a, just a tight-knit group. Like, these can be your extended brothers and sisters. These can be your extended, you know, uncles. As Miss Uncle Mike is quick to say, Mr. Cador is quick to say. He's always Uncle Mike, and he's always calling you nephew. <laughs> he's always saying you that's your cousin and stuff like that. So it's like he's, with that mentality, he's trying to make this a family thing because that's what it is. That's, that's the initial goal is for you to feel like you have extended family that you can reach out to and you know whatever you need help with on your path of life.
talk about the, the freshman class. It's a very talented class coming in and you guys are kind of making your way. Definitely. I mean, all the freshmen here, although it's new to everybody, everyone has the same mindset. You know, we have big shoes to fill from last season where all of the team was working and they've set high standards. So we know what we need to do and now we're just finding new ways to execute. And I mean, all these freshmen here, they're working hard. There's people, like Libby's out now, but Libby, she can put the ball down. Like, she can shut it down. She can make the crowd go silent. And I mean, to Alana setting, you know, she's getting some great touches moving on the ball. Sarah, she's diving everywhere, so flexible. Like, she'll be halfway across the court and be like, wow, like, Sarah's there. Um, Mariana coming in from Brazil, changing positions. I mean, she's executing perfectly. She's being able to play different positions all over. And then Bobby, of course, Bobby knows how to put the ball down. So it's just really good knowing that all these new people are coming in, but everyone has the same mindset. Talk about your game. I mean, are you surprised at how well and how fast you've kind of gotten into the system? Well, I can't say that um, it went fast. Uh, if you would have saw me during preseason, it definitely wasn't easy. It definitely wasn't something that was just a light run in the park. But um, it all came from my teammates, my support system with the coaches, all the way down to the trainers. Like. Whenever I needed something, even it was just a, hey, like, good job, Nay, or, you know, you got this, Nay. Like, it was always there when I needed it, and it always helped me become better and be the player that I'm supposed to be. College volleyball is a lifestyle, it's a job. Um, high school, you're gonna have days off, you're gonna have practices after school, you know, you're gonna have free time. Uh, college, this is what you breathe. This is you wake up, you go to practice, you go to sleep, you're preparing for the next practice. You know, you're eating lunch, you're thinking about volleyball. And it's just a full-time commitment. And there's really, and it's not like one of those things where like you don't like get to live outside of it. It's one of those things where you just live in it, like you live a part of it. Talk about the sophomore class because <laughs> It's a good class, it's a big class, it's also a very talented class. It's, it definitely is. We are really close to each other. We went to a lot of stuff last year. We went like to an amazing season together. We're really close to each other. We, we are family, we're definitely family. Um, we live with each other every single day. We support each other. It's an amazing class with amazing girls um, right here, just like ready to be together and starting all together as freshmen and having the possibility and the opportunity to keep going together as sophomores is, is really, um, it's a really nice, um, I don't know, like, it's just a really nice feeling and we're so happy to be together. Talk about your game, you're fearless on the court, where does that kind of come from? Just, I guess it's just the passion of being on the court and enjoying the moments on there. We never know how long it's gonna be because everything can like everything can come up so I'm just trying to put the best I can and give the best I can on the court, enjoy the moment, help the team, um, enjoy it myself and enjoy it with them, with the coach and with just everyone who's willing to come and watch the games. Just give them a nice a nice show and enjoy the show myself. Back at Orlando Health Stadium on the campus of Eastern Florida State College. Nil-nil between Daytona State and Eastern Florida State in this top 10 grudge match in the NJCAA. Jeff Radcliffe, Tom Traxler, and our entire WEFS crew. So glad to bring this along to you. Uh, I'll, not a lot to talk about, Tom, in, in favor of goals, but it's two good teams kind of playing to a stalemate right now. Yeah, right now I think both teams canceling. Each team's talisman have pretty much been canceled out. It's just a game where you're not finding a ton of space to get on a ball. Tackles have been hard, crunching tackles. Um, I mean, so from that standpoint, if, if you like that kind of game, this game is giving you everything that, that you want to see. Um, not many goal chances. Uh, probably... The best one has come for Eastern Florida, which I think we'll get a look at in the, in the package. A um, little bit of a, a moment of confusion, a missed ball that almost almost resulted in a goal. Um, but, yeah, both teams playing hard, and you can see what 
what this moment means to these two teams as we get a look. Six minutes to go. Yeah, he serves it in. It was a, it was a, it was a misheader. Branton kind of misses and ducks, and then it gets on the keeper, and he misses, and it drops behind. But you're going to see right here. There it is. Absolutely. Christian Rodriguez doing what you should do as a defender, stay on the line, covering your keeper for just that moment, heading it out. Um, and that's probably the best moment of the match. And I, I felt a lot of the match was probably edged by Daytona State, but – the longer the game went in and, and toward the end of the half, I, I, you, you saw sometimes Eastern Florida sitting in, in a double pivot, and that allowed Ryan Thomas to get more involved. He was connecting better uh, w with their talisman uh, and, and, I, you, and Verderossi. And then you saw Eastern Florida start to create more chances getting these corners, and certainly happened when Verderossi got in the game. First half stats brought to you by the one and only Mike Parsons. Uh, three corner kicks for Eastern Florida, one for Daytona State. Uh, shots four and two in favor of Eastern Florida. There were two saves for uh, for the Titans, one for the Falcons. Fouls even at six and six. Relatively low number considering the stakes and the, the, the history of these two teams. Two yellow cards, both on Daytona State players. Um, so... Really, it, it's a stalemate. There's a, some edges there. So what does each coach now have to do to, to, to kind of change their fortunes in, in this direction? If you're Daytona, a nil-nil result gets you a, get another game till Wednesday. Yeah, you're really thinking that, well, for each team, a nil-nil result keeps you playing into next week and, and everything's still to play for. Um, if you're Eastern Florida, you could finish it tonight. But, you know, if you open yourself up, and you, and you really go to try and create the opportunity to score goals. Are you, are you going to open yourself up a little bit at the back and 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 allow East and allow Daytona State the chance to counter? Um, and then you know a, a loss for Eastern Florida, man, that really puts it all up for grabs next week. So um, I think right now, if if you're Coach Joe Avalon, you're probably not changing too too much. Um, you're, you're probably going to try and move Zambrano around a little bit to try and get him on a ball. And if I'm Eastern Florida, probably going to sit where I was, uh, talk about the importance of that double pivot because it really shielded the back four well. Um, and then they start to, like I said, they start to get their full backs forward and create opportunities to score that goal. First goal is going to be massive. We'll bring it to you second half right after this on WEFS. talk about this team what have you seen so far that you like uh, I'm super excited about this team I think we have a lot of potential and we have a lot of hard workers which is obviously super important for soccer and any sport but I can definitely see it with these girls that I think they want it badly this year so I'm excited we went into last year I think super confident but we had that big target on our back because the year before we natty champs but uh, and unfortunately last year we couldn't we couldn't take the dub but um, this year I think I think we almost needed to lose last year, so this year we can really figure out how to take that and learn from it so we can win this year. Them winning the year before I came really showed me that like, oh, this is like a great team I'd love to be a part of, and I just thought it would be, it would be a great opportunity to play with some ballers, and it really, it's been awesome, so super, super glad. I grew up here, so and I had always heard really great things about this program from all of my coaches that I've had growing up throughout the years. And um, again, they won their national championships the year before I came, so it just really I really wanted to stay here, and it just was kind of a perfect fit. I feel like as soon as the season ended last year, just personally with me, I felt like you know gotten so used to training at such a hard level every single day so I definitely wanted to keep that up and everything coming back into the season and I know especially everyone too that came back and returned they felt the same exact way so I think just with all of that it's really um, set us off at a good level already. I just expect everybody to work as hard as they possibly can you know just to keep like our name good and everything keep us up there um, I think just everyone, I just want everyone to have a positive mindset with everything, you know, take everything as it comes. Um, my first two years, my freshman and sophomore year of high school, I played at a local school where I live uh, called Bayside and I transferred to Melbourne High School for my junior and sophomore year. 
but my first year playing at Bayside, um, I don't think Bayside had scored on Melbourne in like eight years or something, and it was one of our first games, and I ended up scoring on Melbourne, and then just, it was just so funny because I transferred there two years later. So I wanted to stay in Florida. That was my main thing. Um, and I wasn't ready to hang my boots up after high school. So luckily Scott and Jordan reached out to me and I got to continue my academic and athletic career at Eastern Florida. I think we have big shoes to fill from last year just with we've had so many great players come through this program. And I think I looked up to all the sophomores last year. So I'm hoping I can set the same example for our younger ones. I'm excited to see what we can do um, coming from last year, just how we made it to nationals again, final four, um, and then obviously didn't get the results we wanted, but I think that just makes us more hungry for this year. And the motivation, I mean, I go out to practice every day. I think everyone does just wanting to have the best season we can. So um, in high school, we were three times district championships. Um, there was specifically one game where I went out in like the first five minutes, I got my lip busted open, ended up having to get stitches the next day, but I went in for like the last 15 minutes after all the bleeding stopped and I scored the winning goal against Merritt Island. <laughs> <laughs>
wild card that's up to the grabs. I mean, you're both top 10. I would think that they would each get in. It would be a better tournament with both of them in for sure. Daytona probably needs to win or get a tie here and win again to make it happen. Just stay up the high in the ranking. Titans have a victory against Monroe on this field. Two nothing against at the time the number one team. Daytona got a 1-1 draw with the same opposition. Second half underway. Titans now attacking the goal to our right. Chipped all the way across on a one-time shot. How about the save from speed? Second ball comes in the way of Man, Morioka, let that one fly. Yeah, I'm, I'm more. And now wins another one in the area. Keeps his feet, crosses away, back post. Oh, Ooh, looking for the handball. I'll tell you what, it's more Morioka magic is what that is. Uh, it, it was the it was the volley, Jeff. I mean, the ball coming. I mean, what great Ooh. confidence hitting the ball first time. And it was on, if that required a save. So you see, supply, look at that, oh, look at it, just, post. yeah, and he hits that, he sits that with his right boot, kind of slices across it. Good positive play here for the Titans in the opening minutes. Verderossi playing supplier there. Leads to a corner kick. Collecting here is Amancio. The fabulous left foot. Try to hook this in on Eric Speed and the Falcons. Instead, we'll play it short. That's a great Oka headed on frame to the back stick. Try it again. That took a deflection on its way out. That was a good ball. Uh, corner. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Morioka. We'll have more of him, please. <laughs> One goal, five assists coming in. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a that was a qual quality attempt on goal. Mancio will give it a roll this time. Back post goes over everybody. Yeah, those high looping balls with time favors a defense and get underneath it. You really want those balls whipped in at pace. We've got another corner, so to, to touch a defender. Eastern Florida coming out early doors. Putting the pressure on. That'll be fair to Rossi. Short corner taken away. The Italian lets it fly. Ooh. Headed just wide of the target. Oohs and ahs. You know, you, trying to find George Wyatt. Yeah, you want to go back the way it came. He tries at that near post or the, it, where he's at, and the ball's coming away, and he, he put it by it. But as they peel off that back, they kind of they kind of lost their mark. Earns another. Just keep switching sides, and remember they, they did that same corner. Now they're going to crowd the keeper here. Expect this ball to get whipped right in where all those bodies are, unless it comes to the top. There it goes. Morioka makes a step, we'll let it fly again, and whizzes it over the top right corner. Yeah, Morioka. He's created. He's created. He's created more fun in this game in the last four minutes than we saw in the whole first half. Morioka, more fun. <laughs> more everything. Job by Saunders to win the header. Hold up for Moreno. Moreno, Mike stays down. Crosses away, whips it right through the box. Looking for Jean-Baptiste. Those are the ones you're just looking for someone to come flying in at the far post. Maybe hit a little bit too hard. Suzuki. Long flick header out of play. Uh, 
I'll tell you what, whatever the first half didn't have, this second half within the first five minutes is, is produced chances and near goals. Eastern Florida wanting to put oh, here got we go. somebody behind here, and this is the one you don't want to see you run Rossi in front. Rolls all the way across. How about that slide? Morioka again. Who is this little magician? It's another foot to it. Try to recycle this. Mancio now turning it back. Letting it fly, Steinleitner. Just got underneath it, kind of sliced it a little bit. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't come forward on the ball. Just kind of backspin, you got too high. But the player, you got right there. That's the guy you want to be watching. Daiki Okada. Okada yeah, Okada. And Morioka, Morioka, excuse me. Yeah, 18 and 19. The Japanese connection. Now it's Morioka. Taiki Okada from Hyogo, Japan. Three goals in the last four games. Just a freshman. Morioka now throwing. Titans win it back. Uh, yeah, last touch. On the, on the way out. Yeah, it was it was touched by Kale Saunders, but it was it was last touched by Emmanuel. Flores. Don Baptiste leaves it to Flores. Good touch. To the line. Cross is away. And eventually falls in the hands of Suzuki. Yeah, he got one palm up there, kind of tipped it up to himself. Here we go. Full the other way. stride again. Emmanuel. Oh, that's going to be. That's, he's going to call it just outside the box. He's going to pull his card out, but he's going to give it just outside the box where the initial contact took place. So yellow about to come here. Here's your transitions. Here's your, here's your attack, counter attack. And yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's who, yeah, the card, the card, the card is, is, is going to Chris and Gongar. But this is going to be a free kick in a really, really dangerous area. Last time it was a similar area. And, and we saw Verderossi going for the near post. That's, that's going to be in play here. Adam Butler watches on with great interest. How long is it going to take to score the goal? Checking the watch. Well, this is a moment. I mean, and, I mean, set pieces are, are huge in a game like this. Set pieces, you know, if you can get goals off set pieces, that's big. If you can get one through in a play, you can get something off a corner, something off a free kick. Ackerman, Stanfeld. You're doing very well. Along with Amancio. It will be Ackerman, Stanfeld. Ooh. Good save. Touched the keeper on the way out forced him to go low and get it. Yeah, he went down. That's coming through traffic, so that's not all, that's not easy to see. Eric Speed did very well there. Again, you see his team giving him a clap, like pumping him up, giving him confidence. Pedro, Brazilian, will give it a go again. In swinger. Time right to the gut of Eric Speed. Guy's path in the box, read the ball well. And high over halfway, Morioka. Now Thomas. Federasi will run out of time on that one. 
speeding the ball there. Again, again, off his line, reading it really well. Daiki. Good switch. Good switch, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Echo Canyon. How about the overlap here from Thomas? Lost the handle. Yeah, good tackle. Good proactive play here for Eastern Florida in the opening 10 minutes of this for the second half. Yeah, really, they've come out and probably been the sharper of the two teams so far in the second half. So a person, some personnel changes, and, and I think you really see them putting an emphasis to attack on their right side, really going after Easter, uh, Daytona State's left side. Oh, Emmanuel, oh, how wow. about that move? Wow. Leaves it oh, and no! Whiffed over the top. Daiki. Oh. Oh. That just, that just. I, I, he hit the harder one, didn't do as oh, well with the easier just, one. It just needed to be caressed into the back of the goal. Watch this, he does such a great job there. Lays it on oh. a platter. Oh, he just needed to finish. And he knows it. Isn't that how it works when you're a forward? That was... You know, you hit the hard one, you do all the work, you get the great shot off, and then the, the layup oh. comes, and it wasn't quite a layup, still. No, no. To get well, it was, I it. mean, that ball was just rolled in so gently. It just needed to be caressed into the back of the net. I mean, Emmanuel, Marquise Emmanuel, was beautiful, beats his man, gets in there, and just lays the ball back across. Black stays down here. Chase by Moreno, immediately under pressure. Long switch, oh, headed from behind by Rogers. Boy, stretched now. Flores back to speed. Hard press, real high press. Steinleitner, first to contact. Now Ackerman Stanfeld. Titans come away with it. To really control the match. Long switch, Daiki Okada. Now Morioka. Well, if I'm, if I'm Coach Adam Butler, I'm leaving that combination over here on, on, on your right side alone. Loud and rowdy here, coming up on half an hour to go. Something, something tells me that the oh, girls Zambrano team. Zambrano and Steinleitner coming together. Shake it. They have been all night long, Jeff. Sometimes the Eastern Florida girls teams here supporting the guys. You like to see that when programs are, you know, supporting yeah, each other. That's normal. The guys will support the, the gals too. You love that. In fact, all the teams do so. Baseball, good, good basketball, school, volleyball. Good school spirit. A battle along the byline there, and it will go in behind for a goal kick for Eastern Florida. <laughs> Thomas battling it out over on the other side, doing a good job again. You know, <laughs> tackles are full-blooded. These teams are going after each other. First header, Daytona. And it'll be Titans ball here from the sideline. Adam Butler in his second season last year. Team went seven, five, and two. One, one, and one in against Daytona State. Ooh. 
smart ball nearly there. Adam came to Eastern Florida from Coastal Bend in Texas. He actually had them on the schedule this year and beat his old team 2-0. It's always nice as a coach when you can play your former school, get a victory. Although I gotta tell you, you made a good move moving here. <laughs> I mean, no offense to Texas, yeah, you but- can, You can recruit to the beach. To yeah. Melbourne, Florida, here on the beach. Come on, easy choice, right? I'm a former player at Southwestern Christian University, NAI powerhouse. It's a first team All-American there. Bounced around the PDL and the NPSL for a little bit. USL 2. The NPSL. You're familiar? I am. Speedy calls it off. It's a great summer league. Yep, Tom here, the head coach of the Central Florida Panthers. Yeah. It's a great summer league for players. It's a great way to, to bridge their seasons in the college game. Whistle from the left side. Coming on the Jets. Titans ball. Box, no oh. problems. Speed's got it. Okada is lurking, and when he when he's on, he's he's keeping Flores he's keeping Flores tucked back. Flores not able to get forward. But as Eastern Florida does, they're kind of morphing morphing their system a little bit, and you can expect to see Coach Avalon do that. Starts out in a three-five-two, may switch to a three-four-three. How valuable is that to have a team that can flu be fluid enough to switch? Very, it, it, it tactics. Very, because you can, you know, it changes the game. Your shape, your shape dictates something different from the other team now. And if they don't pick up on it, it cause them problems. A bad effort from Flores to get that ball in. Moreno couldn't do much with it. Brenton Saunders on it. To Spruce Creek High School, his brother went to New Smyrna Beach. He's just spreading it around up there, you know. You wonder if they changed addresses or... That's certainly possible. Uh, or district lines, who knows, I don't know. Throw to Daytona State, under 27 minutes to go. And we'll allow a substitution. We'll change it at the top of the formation is Hector Moreno comes out. Didier Jean-Baptiste comes in. Guy has scored in each of the last six games. Had a goal against Eastern Florida on the 19th of September. So he's a known quantity. Oh, again, I, in talking with uh, Joe Avalone, he says, it, you know, like I said, you know what you get in Zambrano, but this kid is, is the one you got to keep your eye on as well. He's a surprise. And that's a very good looking ball. Collected oh, wow. Zambrano. With some help shot on its way. Comes the press. Manuel wins the header. Squared. Ole. Well done. Flores to Baptiste. Oh, wow. Stops on a dime, gives him nine cents. Change and just misses the post. Zambrano nearly with a moment of brilliance. Trying to get the traveling fan base in well, ignited here. There you get a good look at the skill set that he has and how smooth he is, how comfortable he is on a ball, how he can cut and turn, create space. And just a few, maybe a few inches away from, from getting the opener. A little deflection. That always scares you as a team because you 
can't account for that. You think you got going the right direction, and somebody deflects it, you're like, I, I can't recover. Sambrano has started 21 of the last 26 games for Daytona State. Again, going at the near post area, but it's covered. Angel Flores. Dennis. Look for the switch. It's manual. What's the pressure on? Falcons have absorbed and absorbed and absorbed the last 15 minutes. Now yeah. a little bit more proactive. Yeah, now they're coming, they, they're going on the front foot. I mentioned, you know, a little bit of change in formation. And they're starting to, to get comfortable, starting to connect passes. Zambrano's finding his pocket of space, getting on a ball. Flores can close down. Morioka. Saunders. Titans can't really get the ball away here. And Good possession. Restrepo keeps it going. Restrepo sitting there in his pivot. Nice to Denise. This little ball into the box. More pressure comes in the form of Moreno. Or Jean Baptiste. Oh, that's oh, boy. Kick. And the first yellow come into a Titan. Let's see. I'm not sure. I think it's just going to be a foul jump. No. Watch closely. <laughs> it's a foul. Yep. And he catches him with a hip. So, again, Carlos Zambrano. Now this is a place where you can get it up and down. The, it's, it's a little tight. You have to be good at getting it up and down. But, well, a little further out, yeah, you can get this up and down. You can probably get quite a bit of pace on this. Get the right amount of, get the right amount of, of dip, bend. Keeper's playing it well, though. He's, he's kind of middle. He's, he's, he's able to cover. He's looking to cover both posts. Might open up the far post, though. Restrepo. Ooh. Nope. <laughs> Gets a bit of a sarcastic cheer for the Eastern Florida section. It's a, it's a highly technical ball to hit. You, you've got to get under and up on it really quick to create that that, that dip. The ball's got to spin. Didn't, didn't quite get up on it enough. Now everything contested that went into the stands. The wick getting turned up a little bit now. It was a big moment, though. You see a nice little, nice little crowd gathered, enjoying this one. Yeah, there you go. We love our EFC boys. No Titans, no party. Yeah. Come on, that's easy. Come on. Throw in Titans. Mora's got to head to it first. Yeah, it's getting a little bit more physical now. Restrepo comes out of there with it. Zambrano lets it fly off the crossbar. Oh, that close to taking a 1 0 lead. You saw him take that look to his left at Flores, but he knew what he was going to do. He was hitting that all day long. The Missouri State commit, watch this. They find him. Look, he's going to have that look to his left, and then he's going to, nope, I'm going to have this, and just skims it off the top of the crossbar. If that had a little more dip on it. Good bit of communication going on between the two fan bases now. Ratcheting things up. That was a chant. You, you feel like something's about to break somewhere. At this point in the match, a goal uh, if, so massive. If you'd asked me coming out of half, I said it looked like a nil-nil. If you ask me now, I don't think so. Something's going to break somewhere. Yeah, it just depends. Who, I said, who's going to blink first? Get a draw. We'll get you the third match. That one's there it is. in no. front. Oh, is that going to be a penalty? That's a penalty. 
or no, offside. 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 Flag came up on the near side. Flag came up, oh boy. You see the fingers starting to go up. Oh, the shoving starting. Kale Saunders. Chances starting to come. Oh. Shoving starting to come. It's simmering, Jeff. It's, it's like simmering. We're getting into the witching hour. It's simmering nicely. <laughs> the pot could boil over. Especially on set pieces here. If you're either one of the shot. coaches, Chef, are you going to turn down the heat or are you going to turn it up? Put the spoon on the top so it doesn't boil over. Nice shot by Luke Ackerman Stanfeld to back a teammate out before it gets a little too far out of hand. Still got the yellow. Adam wants an explanation. Hey, Why is he going to? My guy got a yellow? How come my guy's the only guy getting a yellow? If you're the ref, you're saying, sim it down now. Yeah, right. I didn't see who got a yellow. Was there one shown? There was. Now see every pass. Everything's gonna be magnified now. Good run. Take it away. It's getting a little more wide open, Suzuki. Plays it on the ground, playing with fire. And you know what happens when you play with fire? You're going to get burned. Oh, so says Fire Marshal Bell. <laughs> Let me show you something. Zambrano. Close quarters to Flores. It's cut off. Then he's. Good outlet. Okada, Ooh. long switch. Not quite going to make it. It's a good idea, though. Went for the challenge, missed it. Ooh, good look. Defense and Morioka is there. Yeah, this game is starting, you, you see it stretched. It, it, the midfield's opening up, there's more space in the midfield now. Through ball starting to come. The intensity of this, I mean, the, the, the intensity that both these teams has, has put out, you can see starting to wear on them all. You're starting to see hands going on the hips. You're starting, but it's it's this will that's gonna drive them on. They, they all know what's at stake here. You got about 17 minutes. Yeah to either preserve a draw and play again, or if you're Eastern Florida, try and win it all. Sheezy back on for Daiki Okada. Probably ran out of gas after that good 10 minute stretch. Look at that. That one right in on frame. Not a lot of room for Jean Baptiste to let it fly. He's able to get a shot off. Zambrano starting to heat up. He's been getting more and more on the ball. Becoming a very influential figure. What answer do the Titans have here? I'll let them possess a little bit. Stepping up, Saunders. Way into the attack will continue his run. Forearm shiver, nothing coming from that. Here's Flores, centers, and dealt with by Niall Lovelock. Well read by Lovelock. He just kind of stood in good shape. Emmanuel, it's a race, and one he will not win this time. Oh, oh he's gonna, yeah, he's going to get it as well. He's going to get a card. A little late. It, it, it might have been the extra little screen that, that tipped it over to being a yellow, if you watch here. So he's gonna play the ball, and it does come yeah. in. It's, it's, there was some contact, I, I don't think it was a lot, and I think I think the yell actually kind of sold it to the official. 
I don't know if you look at it again and you look at it without the yell if, if he does go to the pie. I don't know if he goes to right. the book. Chess piece is moving around now. But it was it was the ball was played, so the tackle came in late. You can see is it is a difference when Mastrepo's out there as well for Daytona State. Sitting in that single pivot right now. But he's, he's, winning, some grounds, he's, yeah. well, he's winning a lot of those 50-50 battles. And you've seen you've seen Daytona State kind of in the ascendancy a little bit. Quarter hour left, no score. A win by Eastern Florida wins the conference. A draw or a loss. We get a tie-breaking game on Wednesday night in Daytona Beach. And it's all up in the air. At that point, yeah. Oh boy. Oh. You know, I'm gonna, goes. I'm gonna throw the announcer's curse on this game. How dare you. So far, it's been a good physical game. Now watch what happens. All right. It's been a good physical game. Now all chaos is going to break out. It's the four yellow cards total. Halfway to where they had in September. In front of the benches. Here's Restrepo. He's back. Speed will probably go to Flores. No. Two center backs and two Saunders spread out. Amancio able to win it. And the ball will not cause any problems there. Steinleitner trying to rise the crowd up a little bit for the Titans here. I think, I think more focus on what you got going on on the pitch. Don't worry about the crowd. Let them do their thing. You you worry about your thing. Don't don't take your attention away from where it should be. Back on is Moreno. Big target. Who missed the first match against the Titans? He's had three game-winning goals this year. Oh, big win by George Wyatt, captain of this team for a reason. Stop and start, Zambrano, and draws the foul. Steinleitner, what else can I do? Uh, that's the thing. You, again, I said, you're guarding a real smooth criminal. <laughs> He's going to have something to say. I mean, and, and I think I think Steinleitner's done very well. And I'm really interested in the battle between who's got the better blonde hair. <laughs> Had a lot of steam on it. And go kick. Go kick. Got Maseko for Eastern Florida. And then right near him, you got Flores from Daytona State. Look at that. You tell me. Foul against the Titans. How much left in the tank here? And it will uh, end it when the clock hits zero, it ends. There's yeah. no overtime. And these two teams will be spent at that point. Emotionally, physically, 
mentally. They'll know you got to focus. I mean, right now, neither team can afford a mistake. I understand it is if it does get forced to a, a game three and it ends up 0-0 here, then the Titans just need a tie in the game, third game to win the conference. Correct. Then the tie. Or a loss seven. and just make sure you don't have a goal differential. But right now the goal differential is just one. So like that's going to come into play. It would be tied and have to go beyond that. Yeah, you wouldn't want to lose by more than one. Then, it, then, it's, a, then it's an overtime situation. Right. Square, boy, got to be good with this one. The number 11 lurking, Londano. Under 10 to play. Oh, foul. Yes. Ackerman, Stanfeld, Ryan Klein to, uh, to agree Again, with that well, position. Well, it might, might be a little extra shout. He kind of sells it to the official. That was a foul for sure, but. Brenton Saunders making sure he ref. You saw this, right? Yep. <laughs> Another change is Joe Avalon moving him in and out. John Baptiste keeping people fresh for this stretch run. Yeah, trying to. He's got. He knows he's got the last few minutes, and he wants to be fresh and push. I mean, a winner here would be great if you're Daytona State. But they do have the benefit of a, a draw being, you know, live to fight another day. Tennis comes Hit back on it. Hit the wrong foot on that pass. Dennis earns the corner. Does so well there. You see Eastern Florida and he said, come on, come on. I don't know who they're talking to. Unless they're talking to the crowds, wrong people. Talk to your own players. You, you, you guys need to pick it up. Big moment in this match here, eight to play. Dennis. Don't let him play. We'll let that play on. This could be this trouble. Masico. Oh, it's behind him. Dennis is down. now on it. Running through. Gets the shot away! Oh! Moon kicks out. Emmanuel makes it 1-0. Oh, He's got to keep his pants on. Masiko with the run on the near side, got the cr cross away. And well, Emmanuel. Big touch, he gets the other side of Cole Sarge, cuts inside, and that opens up the far post. And that's a great finish. His sixth goal of the season, none bigger. Let's see what happens, but that's certainly a big moment in this game. I said, who's going to blink first? Yeah, that will pump you up, the man from Uganda. Here comes the finish. Watch the cut. That's what made it right there. Opened up the far post. But the work, nothing Speed could do there. He tried to the make the side. save. Trust. Speed tried to make the save, but far post was in play. Man from the same continent, Masiko from South Africa, had the marauding run down the near side, got the ball away, and Emmanuel did the rest. That's where speed kills. Now, you went from a defensive position to now a winning position. For Eastern Florida, you better focus in for the next couple minutes. You're most susceptible to be scored on within 30 seconds to a minute after you've scored. Because they may think, we've done our job, hey, you're feeling good, it's a bit euphoric, and then, and then you let something go. It's important right now that if you're Eastern Florida, you focus these next few minutes. And he's down, actually. You see Emmanuel, he's down. Maybe too much celebrating. Let's see, he's cramping. Yep. 
And he's like, I'm bleeding. I'm cramping. I'm bleeding. bleeding. And my shorts won't stay up. So the clock stops at 7.45. This also kind of kills some momentum, too. A little bit. Maybe it's good it settles things down a little. Well, let's everybody get a breather. Let it catch their breath. Stops any momentum at this point. Eight minutes to go. Batman, Kisa Emanuel has the game winner and the conference clincher should it stay that way. Looks like Jack Nelson's gonna come on to replace him. Man who had 12 goals last year for Eastern Florida. He's not quite had it this year, just three goals and five assists. But he's got those goals in him. Because now if you're Daytona State, you've got to go score a goal. I mean, this is it. There's no, you know, you're hoping for that large bid at this point, so you're gonna have to sell out a little bit. You're gonna you're gonna have to really push numbers. And Nelson, a player, is really good at holding the ball up. If you can get him down into that corner, he's not gonna take the ball off of him. This is where I think if you're Javelin, you're pushing three forwards at this point. Seco, Flores. Saunders. Get it out of play. Titans ball. So I'm sure Joe Avalon is, is trying to figure out, okay, look, we got to get a goal. So how are we going to roll this out? Who's going to be out there? How are we going to change the game a little bit? Nelson lost it. He's kind of spun on him a little bit. Time becoming a factor now. Coming up on six and a half to go. Zambrano draws a foul. And a card oh. coming. Yeah. To Steinlager. Saunders will take it. <coughs> Oof. That's <laughs> that's where you. It's about the only thing you got, but you're trying a little too much. But the, you bring it down. What's going to happen? Probably lose it. So he says, "Well, you know what? I'm going to have a moment here. Let's see what happens." Under six to go. Bounces and then smothered and covered by Kodai Suzuki. And he will take his time getting up as he should. Now it's like gamesmanship. Look, if you're Eastern Florida now, hey, you're winning. So I'm not going to be as in a hurry to take to get this ball back into play. I'm not going to be as hurry to take free kicks, throw ins. Masiko got bumped and gets out of there. A little pull on the jersey. Referee lets it go. Battle of the Blondes won by Masiko there. Nelson plays it into the area. Saunders cleaned it up. Although one's really platinum, isn't it, Jeff? Masiko's more platinum, platinum blonde. Zimbrano gets back on the ball, comes away with it momentarily. The battler, isn't he? Five minutes to a conference championship. Cramping happening. Defender for Eastern Florida. Several. There he goes. Cramp. That's the worst feeling. that time in the match. See, that's one thing I like about, about college rules. They stop the clock. 
you know exactly how much time is left. The whole stoppage time thing. I'm, I'm always wondering, why can't you just do it? what they do ever around the world, even the country? Stop the clock. Let everybody see how much time is left. Purists no, don't no like mystery. that, though, right? I thought you were ah, purist. You know what? I think I think common sense change is good. Yeah, I'm a purist, but I don't. I want to know how much time is it left. Does though. build drama when you don't, how, though. But how do I know you're right? How do I know you're right with that time? How do I know you're adding it right? How do I know? I don't know, and that's what I don't like. But when you do it like this, I know exactly how much time is left, and it's fair. You stop it right away. There's no, because right now, if you're, if, if it's the other way, the clock's running, and is, is referee really getting all the time right? You never know. You, that's just the thing. You like never how know. Ma how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. <laughs> how, much that time, owl, how much stoppage time is in this game? That owl won't tell anybody. <laughs> and that's one reason I don't trust the owl. They are wise. We're wise, but he's not telling me the truth. <laughs> That owl is shifty. <laughs> right. That, and that, now, now that, that is it, certainly uh, concerning here for Eastern Florida as a Mancio, the midfield captain. I, I, he's, he's just cramping really bad. You just it, sometimes you get like that, and you can't you can't get it to. If you, if he runs, it's going to lock up again, guaranteed. He needs to get over there, get it massaged out, get some fluids in him. But if you're Eastern, if you're if you're Eastern Florida, look, let's get somebody back there that can run. All this is happening with the clock stopped at 4:35. Masika Emanuel, sixth goal of the season. The difference in this one. <laughs> uh, the party will be on, in fact, in 435. Definitely some excitement. Eastern Florida going to try and open this up a little bit, pro or Daytona State probably going to try and open this up a little bit. Right. Try and create some space, get some numbers forward. I mean, it's still, plan it's not panic time, but you do need to get numbers forward. This one was scoreless for 82 minutes. It is on now. Saunders playing a little up high now, too, as a target. Branton Saunders. There is no tomorrow for Daytona, should they not score here. Unless, Unless they, they make the national tournament, which is possible, yes. I I, I think they should. I think it's a better tournament if both these teams are in it. I've said that before, and I, and I believe that. And back-to-back -back years in that national tournament, they were the number one overall seed last year. Titans trying to get back there after a two-year hiatus. The tournament was here on this field last year. Monroe College won it. More contentiousness. Clock yeah. ticking now closer to three minutes. So if you're the ref, you, you got to be on top of it. Young men's frustrations. quickly here. Fly headed forward. You got Doyle who can hold it up and keep it going. How about that ball? The chase is on towards the corner. Took a whack for his efforts as well. Oh, instead of taking it to the corner, drawing the foul. No. No, didn't give it. No. No. No, not seeing it there. There to Rossi. Might have been wise to take it down into that corner and waste some time. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not seeing it. I'm not giving that if I'm the ref either. <laughs> Uh oh. Clock is stopped at 2.21. See, ref has the ability to stop the clock. 
telling you. It's a throw in for Eastern Florida. Rossi to the corner. That's going to be a goal kick. You have to get that to play quickly now. And a substitution coming in here for Eastern Florida. Yeah, good use of substitutions now by Coach Adam Butler because that's just eating up clock and eating up clock and eating up clock. Would be yes. And the referee's going to stop the clock here. Nelson will come off. And Coach Ravelin pointing, going, how, how long did you give him? Put the goal scorer back on. Coach Ravelin pointing at the clock, going, how much time did you give him on that sub? You're taking time away from him. I wouldn't be surprised if I'm Coach Adam Butler if he has another sub lined up. Clock is stopped at 150. Definitely a tactic. When you, when you know how much time you have left, this substitution is, is definitely a tactic. And that's what the referee's going to come over and talk about, and about the time. He wants to see how much time they want to add back, if they're going to add back on. I'll be curious to see if they add back on about nine seconds. The gesturing is there. They go that. back to one, probably either 159, two minutes. So right. they, they went 10 seconds back on the clock. Close. You didn't overbid, though. I did not, so I would win the Showcase Showdown. <laughs> What's in your Showcase? A new car! <laughs> All expenses paid trip to name your spot. Right now, I get an all expenses paid trip to, to Orlando. To Christmas, Florida. Yeah. Christmas. Manual, Verde Rossi on his horse. We'll slow it up. If he could have gotten that bigger touch, would have been on his way. Emmanuel wins that one. Well, he is strong. Masico sends it across, back stick. Oh, what a save. Would he go in? Did he get across the line? It did. It did and get across the line. No, wait, 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 wait. Nope, holding it off. Hold up, hold up. Did it. Nope, he's not giving no. it. No. Great save then, I'm going back to my great save. Well, there is no VAR, but we can at least take a look at this if it went over the line. We are VAR, here it is. There's your, no, no, nope. good, good save good. by Eric Speed. Good and you know what, with Redford. a minute five, might that be a big moment? Might that save be a big moment? Will what a Daytona save. State have one more chance in this game? That close to putting an end to it. First thing Daytona State's got to do is get the ball. Yeah, they and that will take it into the corner exactly what you want to do. 45 seconds to go. Can't do any damage there. Now Flores coming up a little limp. That successfully wasted a good 20 seconds. 30 seconds to play, and look out, that one's out of play. Titans can feel it here. 20 seconds. Two balls. Clock's still running. Down I don't 10. know. This is taking too much time. They count it down. And Eastern Florida are Region 8 champs in 2023. They beat Daytona State 1-0.
Titans, after a two-year absence, our champs, we're in Region 8, get a goal in the 82nd minute. It stands up, successfully see out the game against their heated and hated rival, and this year they get the better of Daytona State, 1-0. Yeah, big, big moment. I mean, it was the only goal it, we said who was going to blink as we get a really good look here. It's Verderosi that comes back for it, but you have a good look because Verderosi came back for it, but Wikisa Emanuel, and it was this little cut right here, beautiful little cut, opened up the far post, and, and just a good finish. And a lot of credit to. I, I, Cheesy, I actually went up the right side with I, it. I actually, the ball is, is you, if, if it went a little further back, the ball was actually looking for Verderossi. That's what the ball's looking yeah, for. As you said, uh, he didn't get it. And, and it was behind him. It, yeah, it was yeah. behind him, and, and it, but it was, it was I found. Mukis Emanuel that kept the run going. Like you're taught. Yeah, and he did. The back post is like 7 11, always open. Put it back the way it came, and it's a winner. For Eastern Florida here, they improved to 12 and one, and now I'll wait to see who they'll play in the district. Again, I'd I'd like to think that both these teams will be in in the playoffs. Well, joining us joining us now, the victorious head coach Adam Butler. Well, Region Eight champions, congratulations. How's it feel for for you and the boys? It feels pretty good. Uh, it was some game, but very nerve-wracking, but uh, ecstatic. Yeah, let me ask you. I tell you, the, the tale of two halves, really. I mean, you, you look at the first half, and I would have said, "Man, this looks like it could be nil-nil." Then you look at the second half, and you're like, "Man, there's chances all over the place." You started the half really, really strong. Obviously, got the goal to win it. What did you say to your team at halftime? Um, great question. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I thought we'd feel like we came into it at the beginning, or uh, sorry, the end of the first half, and it was just trying to maintain that, and uh, you know, really, maybe if we can go further, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I thought that. I thought uh, Steinleitner played a good game. He, he sat, shielded well as your six, and, and limited Zambrano at, at certain times. I know he's a, he had to be a focus for you. Your team did well uh, limiting him. Um, and then on the other side, I mean, you got to talk about Emmanuel not giving up. The ball was actually, I thought, was for Verderasi, but he just kept his run going, and the cutback was fantastic. Yeah, it was some goal, right? Uh, second half was amazing for the neutral, but I almost had a heart attack. Uh, <laughs> what do you guys do now? you got to wait to that October 28th matchup. Uh, it's going to be against Southern Union here at home in that district semifinal. So one win away uh, to, to, to make that national tournament. What do you, how do you guys prepare for that? Uh, enjoy today. Uh, and I'm so thankful we haven't got to go to Daytona on Wednesday. So we'll cross, uh, we'll cross Saturday when we get there. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> To the victors go the spoils. Uh, Region 8 title tonight and a season sweep. Just so you know, Tom, Southern Union lost 8 0 to Daytona State a couple of weeks ago. That should give you an idea how it should go for Eastern Florida, but nothing's a given. So you're saying it should go well? You're saying there's a chance. It's a good chance. For our entire crew, for Tom Traxler, my partner, for Brian Foster, our producer, Roger Hayward, our director, this is Jeff Radcliffe saying so long from. Orlando Health Stadium, the Titans win it 1-0 and capture Region 8 in 2023. Good night, everybody. We now join our programming in progress.